Outlining a book can be really intimidating, sometimes even more so than actually writing the draft. But just like anything else, outlining is easy if you break it down into steps. So grab a pen or open a new document because in today's Writing Workshop Wednesday, we are getting that outline done. And it starts with just one sentence. The one sentence summary is the first step of the snowflake method, which is one of my favorite plotting methods and I'll link to it in the description below if you wanna check it out. For this step, we've got three rules. Rule number one, keep it as short as you can. Don't cheat by writing a run-on sentence that's actually a paragraph. Rule number two, no character names, use descriptions instead. John Smith, no. Asthmatic swimmer with Olympic dreams, Yes. If your book has an ensemble cast, either focus your sentence on the character who has the most to lose or describe the group as a whole, like survivors of a plane crash or outcasts with supernatural powers. Don't try to name each individual. Save that for later in the process. And rule number three, give us conflict. What do these characters want? What obstacles are standing in their way? Why do we as readers care about their story? Let's try an example. This is the equivalent of a log line for a movie. If you want more examples, try browsing Netflix and reading the descriptions there. Wait, wait, I know somebody out there said it. <laughs> okay, look. First of all, yes, that's true of all books. That's why there are zero novels out there that are just one sentence long. Second of all, maybe dial down the pretentiousness just a little bit. For one thing, length and complexity are not the same thing. There are picture books and poems out there that are infinitely more complex than some hundred thousand word tomes. But more importantly, you're not trying to fit all of the ideas and events in your book into one sentence. That's what your book is for. The pitch is just the big picture. When I was little, everyone in my family knew better than to ask me what a book or a movie was about. Because I would start at the beginning and then describe every scene, every line of dialogue in full as much as I could remember. And they knew it would be easier if they just watched the movie or read the book themselves. But few readers will pick up a book without any ideas to what it's actually about. Being able to pitch your book in one sentence is a skill. And it's not just going to help you sell the thing, it's going to help you write the thing, especially when you get lost in the mires of drafting and you forget what your story is actually about. Once you've got that sentence, we're on to step two. My good friend and co-author Lindsay Rebar, who is a former literary agent and fellow Time Lord, gave me this handy formula for writing a query letter, but it also works really well for just finding the bare bones structure of your book. All you have to do is fill in the brackets. Forget about voice, forget about tone, forget about even being grammatically correct. You should end up with two rambly as hell, ridiculous run-on sentences. For fun, let's take our one sentence summary about the boy and the girl and the aliens and plug it into this formula. So this is like a lump of clay that later on you can shape into a great voicey query letter or jacket flap copy for your novel. But for right now, you've got a main character with a goal, you've got an antagonist, you've got consequences and conflict, so you're ready to move on to step number three. So how is this paragraph going to be different from what you got in step number two? For one thing, you wanna aim for a total of five sentences. The first sentence is the setup, the second sentence is the end of act one, the third sentence is the midpoint twist, the fourth sentence is the end of act two going into act three, and the fifth sentence is the climax and how things wrap up. In step two, you hinted at the climax, but you didn't actually explain how things are going to end. And of course you shouldn't. In a query letter on the jacket flap copy, you don't wanna give the ending away. But in this summary, you do. So spoil it, write out the ending. So 
So now we've got some structure. We can see the inciting incident, the midpoint twist, the climax, and the ending. The next step is going to be breaking this out into scenes. This is the joyful part, at least it is for me. I've tried pantsing a novel before, and while it was a really fun and freeing experience, honestly, I find the same kind of joy in writing outlines. Outlining is one of the most amazing parts of the creative process. You're literally building a story. So take a stack of note cards or post-its and write out every single scene you can imagine. Start with the scenes you've included in your paragraph from step three, but don't worry about going in order or figuring out how to bridge the gaps yet. And most importantly, don't force yourself to stick to any world building rules. You are still in the process of building this world. There are no rules yet. If I envision a scene where Jack nearly drowns in the lake, then realizes he can somehow breathe underwater, I'm writing it down because it sounds awesome. It doesn't matter that I have no idea where it will go or why Jack might have this power. Don't restrict your imagination in the outlining phase. Let it run wild. Once you're completely tapped out of scene ideas and you've given any mischievous pets something to chew on that isn't a note card, spread these things out on the floor, on a whiteboard if you're using post-its, on the wall, wherever you can. Then start putting them into an order that makes sense to you. The first few scenes and the last few scenes will be pretty obvious. Clump all the middle scenes together and then see if any possible bridges start to jump out at you. If they don't, no worries. You don't have to bridge every scene together yet. Just get them in the most logical order you can for now and move on to step number five. Just like with drafting, the most intimidating thing about starting an outline is the blank page. Luckily, your page won't be blank for long because you've got these handy note cards. Get them all stacked up in order, then start typing them up in the document. If anything new comes to you as you're typing, like descriptions, dialogue, even new scenes that might bridge one event to the next, write them down. Just like with steps two and three, don't worry about voice and tone here. And while we're breaking the rules, here's one. Tell. Don't show. Tell, don't show. Yeah, I said it. Showing is for pros, it's for the draft. In the outline, not only is it okay to tell, you kind of have to tell. You, the author, need to understand exactly what is happening and what every character is feeling. If the protagonist's best friend is pissed, then tell us she's pissed. Or rather, tell yourself she's pissed, because no one is ever going to read this outline but you. I think that's the thing that holds us back the most when we're writing first drafts. This idea that an invisible agent or editor or reader is looking over our shoulder and going, ew. But they're not going to read it. Nobody's going to read it. This is just for you, so be messy. Tell, don't show, break all the rules you want. Whatever it takes to get the story out of your head and onto the page. As always, I wanna end this workshop with an exercise, and this week that's either going to be the one sentence summary or the query formula, your choice. That's it for today. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below. And until next time, keep writing. This is the equivalent of a long week. If you want more examples, I like to browse Netflix and... Wait. My book is too complex to sum up in just one sentence. There are picture books and poems out there that are infinitely more complex than... Ew. Really? Ew. Ew. Really? Ew. Ew. But few readers pick up a book without any idea of what it is. Rosa. No baby.